My name is Brenda, and this is History Coles Notes. So let's get started. History tells of a time called the Great Depression that was a worldwide economic depression that lasted 10 years. This time was as scary as the name sounds. It all began on October 24th, 1929, which is known as Black Thursday. This was the first day of the stock market crash that started in 1929 and was the worst crash in U.S. history, which started the depression. Now, even before the New York Stock Exchange opened that day, investors were panicked. The stock market had already dropped 21% since its record-breaking low closing on September 3, 1929. Then on October 3rd, the Washington Post put out the headlines of stock prices crash in fanatic selling. The following day, the New York Times jumped on this bandwagon by warning in their headlines, year's worst break hits stock market. By October 23rd, which was the day before Black Thursday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 4.6%, and when they opened the next day, the Dow Jones fell another 11% during the day, and trading volume was about three times the normal amount. Now, this is where the banks decided to make their move. They started buying up stocks to try to restore the public's confidence in the markets, and for a time, it seemed to be working. The Dow recovered slightly, and by Friday, it actually closed slightly higher. But by Monday, which is now called Black Monday, it fell again, which triggered a market panic on what is now called Black Tuesday. After this occurred, the Dow just continued sliding downhill for three more years until it bottomed out on July 8, 1932, losing almost 90% of its value since September of 1929. Losses from this crash helped create the Great Depression. But why did this happen? During the 1920s, investing in the stock market had become a national pastime. From 1922 to right before the crash, the stock market increased its value by 219%. Those who didn't have spare cash to invest would borrow it from their stockbrokers on margin, meaning they had to only put down about 10 to 20%. By the summer of 1929, about 300 million shares were purchased this way. Then the banks started investing their depositors' savings without telling them, and those investments, well, they weren't that great. In fact, the bank's misuse of funds became a hallmark of the Great Depression. Banks did not have enough money to honor their patrons' withdrawals, and so Congress had to create what was called the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation to guarantee the bank's savings as part of what was called the New Deal. So what was this deal? It was an economic policy that Franklin D. Roosevelt launched to end the Great Depression. Its goal was to slow that downward spiral. Their next goal was relief and recovery, also reform for those who were the hardest hit. So what do I mean by the hardest hit? The effects of the stock market's bubble bursting rippled through society. At its height in 1933, Unemployment raised from 3% to 25% of the entire workforce. Wages for those who were still able to have a job plummeted. The United States gross domestic product went from $103 billion to $55 billion due to deflation, which is when assets and consumer prices fall over time. So the United States politicians, they started to panic. So what did they do? They made things worse. In 1930, they decided to put into place the Smoot-Hawley Act, which was a tariff act that increased import tariffs by an average of 40 to 50 percent. It raised the already high tariffs on foreign agricultural imports in hopes to support U.S. farmers. All it resulted in was high food prices, and then the other countries got mad and retaliated with their own tariffs. This forced global trade to drop by 65 percent. So now what started in the U.S. started to bleed out around the world, and it helped lead us into World War II. Why? The Germans were already suffering from financial repercussions from World War I. This caused a hyperinflation in their country, and as a result, people started to become desperate. Because of this, people started to believe the words that came out of an evil man's mouth who gave them somebody to blame. They became desperate enough to elect that man and the Nazi party into power in 1933. So now that we know what caused it and how it spread, what was life like during the Depression? Well, absolutely horrible comes to mind. 
the depression caused many farmers to lose their farms. And at the same time, many years of overcultivation and drought created what was called the Dust Bowl in the United States Midwest, which destroyed the agricultural production in a previously fertile area. The Dust Bowl was a natural disaster which is considered to be the worst drought in North America in a thousand years. Unsustainable farming practices worsened the effect of the drought, and it killed crops that prevented the soil from eroding. When the wind blew, massive clouds of dust went into the air depositing mounds of dirt on everything. It caused pneumonia in the young and weak, and it suffocated livestock. The Dust Bowl affected the entire Midwest, with the Oklahoma Panhandle being hit the worst. It also devastated two-thirds of the Texas Panhandle and reached as far as New Mexico, southeastern Colorado, and Kansas. Thousands of farmers and unemployed workers migrated to other areas to try to find work to feed their families. So how did this affect the average person? Well, three years after the original crash, nearly 30 million Americans lost their source of income. Those lucky enough to have work, they took massive pay cuts or they worked reduced work schedules. The crisis didn't just affect the rural areas, but it devastated the urban regions too. It damaged all classes, but the pain was not equally distributed. The impact varied according to your industry, class, race, location, and at times sheer luck. White collar jobs typically fared a little better than blue collar jobs, but many people who farmed or raised produce were forced to sell or abandon their homesteads. Employment discrimination increased in intensity, with many African American or Asian American descent being pushed out of their jobs. With no unemployment benefits being available, many families, they also had one breadwinner. This all led to mass homelessness and hunger. Minimal help with food or lodging were available, and this resulted in the government raising taxes in an attempt to feed the hungry. The need, it far outstripped the local resources. So how did this all end? On the surface, World War II seemed to end the Great Depression. During the war, millions of people were drafted or joined the military. Many more were able to get jobs that supported the war effort. Due to this, many historians believe that the massive spending during wartime resulted in the end of the Depression. But economists? They have another opinion. The truth of it is that yes, the war brought jobs, but it also brought a huge financial burden for the countries involved. In other words, the war only postponed the issue of economic recovery which happened with the shrinkage of government and less spending. Thank you so much for watching today and be sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you can join us for more History Coles notes. Be sure to check out all the other amazing content that we have on the Horrifying History channel and be sure to follow us on social media. It is here that you guys will be the first to hear about what's coming up in the Horrifying History universe and connect with other history addicts like me. You can find the links to our social media in our show notes. Thank you guys for watching today and until next time.